Okay, well, I guess we should get started, make the most of the time. Um, so, song leading. The main purpose of the song leader is to, we don't want to be the distraction. Um, and so we want our technique to be as smooth as possible. You're trying to unite a congregation. So clarity is huge. Um, and not distracting from the whole flow of the service. Very, very important. So, you know, I, I don't know how much what your background is as far as song leading goes, but um, maybe you could just explain some of what you've done as far as maybe having to sub your musical background. Could we just go around the room so I have an yeah. idea? Yeah. So, so I started um, in freshman or sophomore in high school with uh, under Kurt Wetzel at mm -hmm. Trinity Baptist Church in Concord. Um, and it was just an elective class that he was offering. And uh, I started there. I took piano, three years of piano when I was little and never really got the hang of it. Mm -hmm. But I understood the basics of the music. I could just work at my hands to do the, <laughs> the keys. Because so I understood the music. If I can't play it, I can at least lead it. Yes. Oh. So that was a mindset I took. And uh, I've been doing it off and on since then until last year pretty much full-time um, at my local church in New England Shores Baptist Church in Hampton uh, doing majority of the song leading and I have Josh the two of us are doing the doing the music ministry there oh. wonderful every, great. every Sunday I'm forced to do it the last two Sundays <laughs> <laughs> oh, just the last two yeah. or every, okay okay yeah. Yeah. unless there's a fifth Sunday and, then, and how, do you, how, do, how do you feel about that <laughs> I'll serve where you yeah that's good. That's how a lot of us have to do it. Is we mm -hmm. just there's a need, someone has to step up and being willing to do mm -hmm. it. I never envisioned myself directing a choir mm -hmm. and song leading. I was always at the piano, um, playing mm -hmm. hymns, and you know what? I'm studying music education. I should probably learn. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I wanted to strictly do band, instrumental conducting, because I didn't really want to sing. <laughs> um, I'd love to sing, but just not as a soloist in, fr in front of people. So, um, but I took choral conducting in college just because I knew, you know, Lord willing, I'm in a Christian school and you have to do band, choir, everything. So, and it's funny now because what I originally wanted to do, I'm doing more of the choral aspect. Because, you know, I'm in church and we need someone for the choir, we need someone to lead hymns. And that's how a lot of us get into this and we don't know what we're doing, but... It's neat how God uses people that are just willing, you know. Mm -hmm. you, you think of, you know, weaknesses that we have. You think of Moses and his speech, you know, and, and same thing for us, you know. But what we want to do is we don't want to distract. We don't want to look like we're clueless up there. Um, so it's important that we're clear with our gestures and everything. So um, why, why have a conductor? Why not just sing in front of the, you know, the, the church? Well, um, you have instrumentalists on different sides. I think... One really important thing is to use the talent you have in church. So you have someone learning flute, encouraging them to be part of the orchestra is, is huge. You know, A lot of churches have gone to the praise and worship platform, performance-based. It's so loud that you, know, you don't know if the people are singing or not. You know? and, and that's, you read through the Psalms, sing, sing until the voice. We want to hear people's voices. You know? And I think a lot of what's happened is Churches have stopped singing because maybe it's a heart issue, spiritual, whatever, but they, because of that has gone down, they want to make more sound on the stage to feel like there's no void, you know. So, um, you know, we're going to be doing hymn improvisation, and that's big because that's supporting the congregation so that they can sing out even more, okay? Um, so when it comes to song leading, um, I'll talk about some basic patterns that you should know. What's the most common pattern in four, music? 4-4. Four, four, four. We call that common time. 4-4. Uh, four, four. It depends on um, how fast music is going. This morning we sang Ann Canopy. What was the time signature for that? Anyone know? That's 4-4. Four, four. Is it 4-4? Four, four? Or is it 2? See, it could be either one. Kind of. It depends on the tempo. It depends on what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, with Ann Canopy, if I'm trying to move it more, I might do two because it gives it a different feel. Um, when I do four, if I'm conducting every single beat, it becomes a little more mechanical. So when you want to move the music forward, you know, think about when you sing hymns, singing four stanzas, 
if you sing them the same way every time, it's mm -hmm. easy for us to zone out and not think about the text. So um, <coughs> changing the feel to match the mood of the text is important too. Like, for example, in Can It Be, we sang the verse reflecting on our sin. So to slow that down a little is really nice because now we're reflecting the text. Okay? So, 4-4 four, four pattern. 1, 2, 3, 4. Right there. 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, first rule of uh, song leading is you just have to be able to find the beat. Okay? And this is easier in some hymns than others. I don't know if you've noticed. When you're starting... Um, Singing like I am resolved would be much easier because you can feel that pulse, okay? Mm -hmm. um, when you get to songs like Blessed Assurance, that's a 9 8. How do you conduct 9 8? <laughs> uh, 9. Okay, wait, 9. 1, 2, 3, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Well, how fast is that song going? Da, 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 da. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, right? I don't want to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm going to look like I'm going to fly away, you know? So. You, you got to do three for that one, okay? <laughs> oh, Holy Night. Um, well, that's a tough one for a church to sing because it gets high at the end, you know? Um, songs that are a challenge, I would say, um, Be Still My Soul. What happens on that one? Jesus. There's a big downbeat on beat one that the pianist has to do. The whole church comes in on beat two. I've seen this happen so many times where it just falls apart. Okay, let's try it again, you know? <laughs> But you, you know, you have to be clear. So you have to communicate with your instrumentalists and practice those moments. Um, how about How Great Thou Art? What beat does that come in on? Oh, Lord, my God. So it's the end of three, you know? Okay? So four pattern right here. Um, instrumental conducting, choral conducting are a little different, okay? Um, when, when I'm leading singing, if I'm doing a band, I'm going to have a baton. But with choral, I'm trying to match the sound of the voice. So just your hand, your posture, where do we breathe? Up here or down here? You know, deep breath, right? So conducting lower, especially for a choir, is important. If I go up here, my choir is going to sound more shallow. So just by where I conduct, it's going to affect the sound. Now, if you have a big pulpit, you can't conduct down here. No one's going to see it, okay? So just uh, something to think about. Both hands, one hand, what should you do? No, both. Well, no hands. It depends. No hands, <laughs> just keep the beat. Now, if you don't know what to do, just keeping the beat is, is the most important yeah. thing. So if you're not sure how to move your hands. Yeah. But if you have people on this side, people on this side, then using both hands would be yeah. more important. We're trying to match the sound when we're conducting, too. So if I want a softer sound, I'm going to use a smaller pattern. And if I want a stronger sound, I'm going to use a larger pattern. Now, if I'm conducting a church of five, I'm probably not going to be conducting <laughs> this big, you know. That's a conductor wishing they were conducting a symphony of a hundred, you know. <laughs> so you have to match the mood, too, you know. So, um, you know, so usually I'm going to be over here. The left hand can do a number of things. It can conduct the beat. We call this um, mirroring the beat, okay. So this is nice and strong. A final chorus, you know, I'm, I'm trying to compel people to really sing out. You know, what do I, with the left hand, if I want a softer sound, I can just go like this. See, I turn my hand. Usually that's a sign of rejection, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so when I'm looking at the trumpets in a band, I might be, you know, softer, softer. Or if I do this, I want more. See, so this is more inviting, right? Come here, give me a hug, you know, when I'm going to my daughter later. But same thing with conducting. This is inviting, okay? So your coordination is important as a song leader. So first off, uh, why don't we work on this four pattern, okay? So we'll try it together. You're going to do the right hand. Can you uh, look up a hand? Sure. Uh, I am Resolve works. Okay. Now, we don't have a lot of room in here. So you don't want to hit your neighbor in the face, okay? I have one arm, so careful. <laughs> okay. The exact point of the beat is called the ictus. It's a really fancy word. It just means where the exact beat is. One, two, three. Four. Okay, so you can use your right hand. Just want to stand up, spread out, I don't know. Let's try it again. Okay? Here we go, right hand, two, ready, and.
couple things. Um, a lot of people don't go far enough for beat three. They put beat three about center, down, left, and they go here. You want to go kind of farther out for that, okay? One reason is you've got to distinguish where each beat is. If you have instrumentalists that get off, they can tell, oh, okay, beat four is here, now I'm on the downbeat again. So it's important that each beat is in a different place, okay? So slow motion, just do beat one, beat one, two, three, come out. See how far out I am there, okay? So it's farther out than you think. It feels awkward at first. You feel like you're really reaching far, but that's, you want it to be clear where you are, okay? All right, so let's just go slow, ready? One, two, three, you can four, play. One, two, three. Four, one, two, and you don't want to be floppy with the wrist, otherwise we have no idea where to go. Two, three, four, pick it up. One, two, three, four. 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 Good. Okay. Another thing you can do is when you're conducting a chorus and there's a long hold, Instead of conducting every beat like we're stuck on repeat, just holding it two, three, four, and then leading us back in. Okay? Um, let's see here. So, like you see in the music right here, we have four beats. Mm -hmm. Do we need to conduct every beat there? Yeah. Not really. So, you could just hold it out, matching the text, and then we cue back in. Okay? So, let's try that. Let's try Adam Rizal. Okay? Verse or chorus? Um, do the verse, yeah. One, two, ready, and go. You can hold it out, and now encourages people to look up too, yeah. which is good. People get buried in the hymnal. One reason why a lot of churches use PowerPoint is because just having the heads up, now we can hear the church instead of all of them glued. And it's funny, right? We um, we sing hymns hundreds of times, and yet we still need the words. You know, it's like why we should reflect more in hymns so that we actually learn the words. I, I would I would encourage people to do. You know, because they get buried in Amazing Grace. Like, why are they looking down? You know that, you know? And you've sung the chorus four times and now you're still glued. So as musicians, we do tend to be glued if we see it. So just encourage yourself to look up if you can. Now, you don't want to be singing the wrong verse. It's always awkward. You're singing verse four, they're singing verse three. So make sure you're on the right verse too, okay? So that's four, four. Uh, let's look at another one, uh, three, four. What's the three pattern? So you're going to go down, out, and up. Okay? Try that for me. Slow and go. Down, out, up. Down, out, up. Down, out, up. Now, what if it's fast? What do you do for the fast thing? What pattern? Anyone? If it was faster, what would you do? If it's going. Well, the pattern is the same. It's just faster. Well, no, you can actually simplify it. So, like we talked about 9 8, I don't want to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's too much. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 for blessed assurance. That's 3. If it's even faster, you would do a 1. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay? He lives. 6, 8. Do I want to do 6? Or what would I want to do? I would do a 3. 2. 2. 2. two. That's right. That's yeah. Divide, because divide, um, divide the top number by 3. Right. Just calm. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. 6, 8, you're going to do a 2. What's a 2? Just down and up. It's like a backwards J. Okay? Nine, nine, so let's try two. Ready? You want to do two? Down, up. Down, up. And you're going to come out. Yeah. So come out with that arm. So like down and up. Yeah, there. And you don't want to be too rigid, but you don't want to be too floppy either. Otherwise, we have nothing. Okay? Yeah. Okay? Cool. So let's see here. Oh, yeah. Come thou found. What beat do we start on? We're close. Whatever, whatever. One more option. Two. Three. 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 B3. Three. 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 Come down, down. Right? It, it starts on B3. Okay? That's called a pickup. If you're new to conducting, you don't like pickups. 
You like it when they start on beat one. Okay? All right? Because they lead in. Why do we have pickups? Why not just start every song on beat one? Variety, musicality, the way you... It's because of the emphasis of the text. What word do I want to emphasize? Found. Come thou found. Right? Um, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Right? It's right on the downbeat. We wish you a Merry Christmas, whatever. It's emphasized in the text, okay? Can we try and come that far? Okay, a little intro. Here we go, ready? One and two. Come the What's the most critical time? It's that first entrance. Okay, that's when people look at you. If you look at your church, they're looking up for you at the chorus usually, on the next verse, right? So you want to make sure you get that clear. Let's try that entrance again. So what are you gonna do? If you're in three, da, 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 one and two, three and one. See that one? So we're going up and one. See? So we took that last beat and we just go. Up and one, two, three and one, two. See that? Okay, can we try the intro again? Here we go. One, two, three and 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 down, out, up, down, out, up, down. There we go. Try both hands. This will be fun. Okay? So what are you gonna do? You're gonna mirror the hands. You're gonna go down, out, up. Conductors actually tend to live a long time because of the cardiovascular <laughs> health of doing this. So this is good for you. So you you're thinking of your health when you're doing both hands, okay? So down, out, and up. So let's try it slow, okay? Don't hit your neighbor. Here we go. Ready? And one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, how does that feel? Two, three. One, two, three. I feel like one, a bird. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three, and one. Okay? Yeah, so that's the three, four. So that's another option you can do. Now, if you're lefty, that doesn't mean you should conduct with your left hand. You're still going to do your right hand, okay? A lot of people want to do that. No, it's still the right hand, okay? Yeah. And make sure people can see you. You know, your pianist can see yeah. you. I see people where they set up in a way where they're like looking at the wall and you can't even make eye contact with them. Okay? Now, introduction. When the pianist starts, sometimes they go too fast. Sometimes they go too slow. So usually let them dictate the tempo in the beginning. And then when you lead in for the verse, you can control it with your pattern, with your voice. Sometimes they just don't pay attention. Okay? And they do their own thing. Okay? My wife is amazing. No, no, no. She always follows never, me. Yeah. Never. <laughs> okay? So what I what I mean is here, so play the intro kind of slow and I'll pick it up, okay? See, we're gonna fall asleep if we know that speed, right? Here we go, ready? Come thou fount of every blessing. And one thing you can do, eye contact, right? Look. Now now if they mess up, you don't want to embarrass them. Okay? That's important too. I see you. Okay? If something happens, the pianist can't get it right. You, you don't want to give a dirty look over to the pianist, okay? You know, what's wrong with you? You know, that's not good. So you got to encourage them because they're ministering and, you know, you're, you're trying to get it together as best you can. <laughs> um, okay, what about holds in songs? How great thou art. Aww. What Anybody happens? Those. <laughs> okay? Yeah, let's look that up. So, um, should you hold it every time? No. If we hold it every time, we get tired of that, mm -hmm. okay? And the song drags on. So typically, I'll keep things moving until first four. Mm -hmm. And usually people will want to hold it out. So you just have to, you'll tell them, okay, we're going to take the holds down, okay? We're going to hold it out. Um, same thing with He Lives. You think of the final, you ask me how I know He Lives, right? He lives within, how long, do, you know, you don't want to do that every verse, okay? You want to save it for the final verse, okay? So which one, um, how great thou art? Yeah, let's try this. So this is a tricky entrance. It starts on the end of three. So it's one, two, three, oh Lord my God, like that, okay? So you're, you're getting your hand ready, 
One, two, three. Oh, Lord. See? You have to feel beat three. You don't wait till the end. One, two, three. Oh, Lord. It's called the gesture of syncopation. Okay? <laughs> and, and all that means is you're feeling that beat before they come in. Think of Beethoven's fifth. Ba, 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 bum. They have, the conductor has to cue that empty beat. Okay? So if you ever have an entrance on an offbeat, you're feeling that strong beat before the eighth note pickup. Okay? Let's try it. See that? Anyone know that symbol? What's that called? Fermata. fermata. Yeah. What is a fermata? Looks like a bird's eye. Actually, it okay. means to hold longer than its value. Okay. And for instrumentalists, it means watch the conductor. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you gotta hold that. How long? Usually, it adds about half the value. Right there, it's about a quarter note. Okay. Da -da -da -dum -bum. Hold, hold, hold. Okay. So let's try that. All right. Uh, can you do the final? Let's do the chorus. Okay. Then sings my soul. Ready and three. Then sings my down. subdivide the beat a little. So one and two and three, four, one. What does a subdivide mean? It means I'm feeling the eighth note, okay? What we felt the whole song was uh, the beat, right? That's the beat. What's the subdivision? One, faster. Say just a little quicker. How great the one and two and three, four, hold. Okay. Any questions so far? How are we doing? Get some good exercise? Not feeling it. Not feeling it? Okay, let's do a two. Let's do a two. Um, he lives. Here's a question. Yeah. Should the congregation hear the song leader? Should they hear him? You mean as far as singing? It's helpful to hear the voice. Um, for me personally, I don't, I don't like hearing myself. <laughs> you know, so I would rather hear the church sing, right? Um, but they do need some. But you're singing. You're yeah, yeah. But I do sing. I would definitely sing. I think because for you not to sing. Piano more though. Right. What? I believe they tend to follow the piano more though. Depends. If the conductor's strong, right. usually everyone should follow the conductor. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, if the conductor's not sure what they're doing, they'll follow the piano. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same thing with the choir. You know, a lot of conductors respond to the instrumentalist, but the conductor's supposed to lead the beat. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it's important to teach your instrumentalists how to do that too because if you always just respond to them they're never going to watch you so what you can do is on a hold you hold those out they don't follow you well now they're going to follow you next time because they don't want to be the ones playing at the wrong time okay so you got to try that too so you set them up to fail sometimes yeah yeah and then, otherwise they'll never they'll never follow you yeah yeah because I want my choir, I want the church to look up and to watch. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and I'll encourage them. And if you, if it, if it all falls apart, do the course again, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, don't yell at them, of course. <laughs> What's wrong with you? You weren't watching me. You know, you just do it again and uh, go for it. So let's try it. Let's try a beat that's a little, um, a little simpler to learn. It's just a two. You use this one for two, four. You also use it for six, eight. Okay? It, six, eight's usually a fast speed. It's more upbeat, okay? Um, he lives. Well, which is doing two, do two, do four, four, four as well. Really? You know? Yeah, because if you're not used oh, to that man. pattern yet, yeah, and you're like, okay, well, was it left? Was it right? Was it up? They you don't feel cheated? Not really. No, nah, yeah. You just, you want to be clear, right? right? So trying to be clear. Clarity is huge. Okay? Um, trying to think what else. Um, other tricky ones. Oh, so what does the left hand do? Left hand it can conduct the beat. It can also do cutoffs, okay? But coordinating our hands is, is an issue as well. So first top priority is learn patterns. Learn two, three, and four, okay? You can use four for 12-8. You can use it for 4-4. Four, four. You can use two for 2-4. Two, you can use it for 2-2. Uh, two, two, you'll see sometimes. What's 2-2 two, two mean? <laughs> this, is, this doesn't happen much. Um, what hymns do we have that are 2-2? Two, two? Mm -hmm. Sing praise to God is 3-2. Is there some that's 2-2? Yeah, the 2 Um, Oh, for a thousand tongues. That's in 3, but that's like, it might be 3-2. Yeah, two. yeah. So if you see 3-2, know that your pianist might have trouble with it. Okay. But you're still going to conduct 3. Yeah. Okay. So for the 4-4, four, four, you're going to do 4-4 four, four, or 12-8. Oh, there's a 2-2, two, two, the majesty and glory of your name. Oh, yeah. Kind of chorus. So also, so the 2-2, two, two, this is 1-2, use for 2-4. You can use it for 2-2. Two, two. You can use it for a fast 4 or just a 4 if that's easier. 1-2-3-4. 1-2-3-4. Um, you can also use it for 6-8, okay? And then the 3-4 is usually the trickiest one for new conductors. So you might want to avoid songs in 3-4 for a little while until you get more comfortable with 3-4. Yeah. Sing We Now of Christmas 2-2. Oh, yeah. Sing We Now of Christmas. You guys know that tune? Here, play it. So 4 or 2 for this one? One, I would two, actually do it as a four, two, but one, two, one. See, the four would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Or you could do a slow four. But yeah, one, two, three, four. You could do that too. But see, if the instrumental is playing, you kind of want to match the meter that they see, so they know where the downbeat is. Okay. Okay. So let me give you a, a little exercise in coordination right now. Okay. So um, first, learning the, this pattern. One thing you can do. It's just, if you want a crescendo and you want to build, try, try doing this and just take your left hand and go up smoothly with that. And that'd be kind of a crescendo effect, right? We're trying to get people to sing. And when you start doing this for the first time, you're going to find your hand bouncing, okay? But you want to try to keep it smooth or softer like this, okay? See? You can also practice doing a circle while you conduct a four. So you do four four patterns in one circle complete. Okay? So that'd be like this. One, two, three, four. <laughs> two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Four, two, three. You know? So try to get it to time when it comes up. That's just some drills you can do to improve your coordination. Okay? Another really fun one. <laughs> um, you do a four, and with the left hand, you do ear, nose, ear. Okay? So I'm doing three with my left hand, and I'm doing four with my right. So I can go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay? Why would I do this to you? Well, if you're ever trying to 
Q and cut off, that's a good thing to do. Okay? So if you ever have to do choir, how do I cut off a choir? You know? How do you cut off a choir? You know? <laughs> you know, so it's awkward. Like you'd have to cut off on B one. One, two, three, four, one. Off on one. One, two, three, four, one, off on two. See? So if you ever have to fill in for your choir, that's what you would want to do. So do it in an exercise like this. You want to try it for fun? Here we go. I know, you're like, I can't even do the four. How can I do a circle? Okay, so let's do the four slowly. Ready? Just the four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now let's try, let's try the crescendo first, okay? Ready? Ready and go. One, two, three, Four and now down, two, three, four, and then up, two, three, four, and down, one, two. That's hard, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. Yeah, level. no. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta be a musician to do this. Now, if you're a pianist, it's easier to do this kind of thing because you're used to left brain, right brain, left hand, right hand. Um, so, you know, like I said, don't try to do too much, but. The simplest thing you can do is just learn that two pattern first, okay? Learn how to bounce. If you get off, just keep it straight like that, you know? And three is a little more complicated to feel the beat. Um, let's try Be Still My Soul. That's a good one to do. You having fun yet? <laughs> posture is important too. You want uh, People will match your posture. They do studies with choirs, and when the choir director's hunched over, a lot of times the singers are doing the same thing, mm -hmm. you know, so they match your posture. Mm -hmm. If your head's buried in the music, they're going to do the same thing. So if you want people to look up, you should be looking up too, you know. Person. Yeah. So when I look out, you know, you're looking, why aren't they singing? Why aren't they looking up, you know? But, you know, you, you want to encourage people to, to lift their voice, yeah. Are there things that you do for your congregation to teach them to sing? as a congregation and participate like they should? Like, do you give props? Do you do, because churches just don't know how to sing like they should. Oh, yeah. The congregation. Yeah, so, um, well, first off, um, like you just kind of the history, we can all sit down for a second. Stand for a while. Um, congregational singing has, it was so bad back in, you've heard of Lowell Mason? He wrote uh, When I Survey. He's called the father of music education. It was so bad that in the churches, they, they would describe it as they sounded like cats and dogs trying to sing. Like their, their singing was so poor. So he had such a burden for music education. So he started music education in the public schools to get people to learn how to sing. And back then, a lot of the education was geared around church as well. So um, notation, really, a lot of that evolved so that the, the church could improve in singing. So now... We've kind of gone the other way where people have stopped learning. They don't know how to read music anymore, you know. So what's happened? Now, a hymnal of 700 hymns, they can't read music, so people like to sing songs they know. So the song um, collection has shrunk in so many churches, mm -hmm. you know, down to 30, 20. And if they don't have a hymnal and they're just doing PowerPoint, it's going to stay pretty small. Mm -hmm. Because how do you know how to read? So music reading is huge. It's really important. Um, so in my choir, I teach a lot about how to read. With the congregation, I probably should more. So it would be helpful for the church to learn how to read. Or at least to look yeah. up or follow yeah. or yeah, to open look their up. mouths. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we go to a lot of churches, and some churches just don't know how to sing. Yeah. yeah. And then other churches you go, and it's a smaller group, but they can really sing. So it must have been somebody really prompting or mm -hmm. spirit or... Also, a lot of the churches, the, the ranges of the songs have shrunk, too. So it's important to push, push that range as well. You know, think about a wonderful grace of Jesus at the end. How high it goes, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it goes up high. So it's important to stretch the range of the church. But you don't want to, you don't want to sound terrible on him either. <laughs> so you have to know your church mm -hmm. and what they can sing. You have to know your accompanist and what they can play. Mm -hmm. You know, wonderful grace of Jesus is a tough one. Mm -hmm. You know, it moves fast. It used to be in the key of D flat major, so the pianist would have to worry about five flats. Now it's in C, so you know that's convenient. But um, yeah, um, but the note reading is important. So I I do like PowerPoint, 
but I want to get the ch I want the church trying to read the notes too. And maybe you found that even mm -hmm. over time, you can kind of pick out when it's holding longer and when it's not. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take a lot to learn how to read basic rhythms, so. So you know, just taking the time to do that. Um, when you're directing songs as well, try to change it up. Don't just sing all the verses all the time. Um, I would rather our church sing two verses and really mean it than sing four verses and by verse four they're totally zoned out, not thinking about the text, mm -hmm. and we're just running through the motions, you know. Mm -hmm. So I encourage the church to really think about what they sing. You know, sing with the understanding. It's it's a command in scripture, so that's important. So drawing their attention, changing it up, having ladies sing for a verse, having men sing for um, a verse is good. If you only have one man in the church, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to feel so good about that. <laughs> you know, so doing stuff like that. Um, acapella singing is nice. You know, it can be nice. It can be painful, too. I mean, listen to people sing happy birthday in restaurants. And, you know, it's, it's not a pretty thing sometimes, but... You know, I like to do that in Parsippany a lot, so we'll do the acapella singing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, instrumentalists are key for, for our song leading, for support. So, yeah. So people learning how to play, that's that's a huge part of the ministry, too. How yeah. do you introduce your hymns as a, as, as a song leader for your church? How do I, what do you mean? Like a like new hymn turn or? Your, well, like turn, turn in your hymn book, pick up your hymn book, let's do, do you, you give the title of the song and the, and the number. Oh, I, I change it up a lot. So I don't always, I don't want to always say, okay, hymn 111, right. title. I, I don't want it to feel like we're just running through, going through the motions, you know. So I, I, might, I might tell the hymn story and talk about the background, do some research, uh, share a scripture verse before I read the, you know, share the title. Talk about a phrase in the, in the hymn that is really key, that I think is really important mm -hmm. to focus on. Greg, do you know the name of the book you use to reference hymn stories a lot? Maybe you could recommend that. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, there's a book called Amazing Grace. It's like uh, 101 hymn stories, I think. Mm -hmm. Those are helpful. Sometimes That's important. I'll take a, a few phrases from that, not, you know, not reading the whole article, right. but the key thoughts and use that to in introduce it, and then it encourages the congregation to think about the history of the piece and be more present. I like to, people. I also like to change the tunes to the hymns sometimes. Mm -hmm. So like a hymn that we always sing to this tune, singing it to a different tune. I don't know if you know how to do that. Um, if you look, do we have those hymnals? Let's see. If you look in the back, each hymn has a meter, okay? So if you look on page uh, 726, this is way back, okay, now what does this mean, <laughs> okay, <laughs> did you know the Amazing Grace, the tune we know for Amazing Grace is not called Amazing Grace, mm -hmm. it's called New Britain, <laughs> did you know that, like the original Amazing Grace was not sung to that tune, mm -hmm. you know. So all throughout history, music history, we have texts that are really good. And we have a, we'll have a tune that's matched up to it. And the church loves singing that. But after a while, a new tune comes in. And that one latches on. And after a while, a new tune comes in. So it's, it's constantly changing. You know? um, Mighty Fortress was not sung to the tune we sing today. It was very different. So this is a, this is a really nice technique to use. So, for example, let's see here. Um, so, surrender. You see, okay, 8787 with refrain. What does 87 mean? Um, it's referring to the syllables in the text. Okay? So, let's take Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Eight. That saved a wretch like me. Seven. I once was lost, but now am found. Eight. Was blind, but now I see. Okay, so you see, you can take a tune, and you can switch tunes with a different text. So that's what that's for. Okay. And they've already figured it out. They've already figured it out for you, so you can usually take that. Now you'd want to double check. Okay. <laughs> um. Let, yeah. For example, let's look at when I survey. Thank you. 
Okay? Now, you look at these words. They don't get much better than this, right? Where the whole realm of nature mine. Isaac Watts, he used to rhyme, rhyme to his father. He'd answer his father back in rhyme all the time. His father would get annoyed with it. And, um, <laughs> but he was so gifted in his ability to rhyme. Unbelievable. He, he knew Greek, Hebrew, I want to say age of 8, 10. He's just an incredible mind. So you look at this text, but churches sing this, and we sing it a lot, and eventually we don't think about what we're singing. So look at 292, When I Survey. Here's another tune that you can sing to it. Have you heard this tune before? Mm -hmm. They do amazing grace to them. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's just sing through that and, and just feel how the mood switches, right? Ready and go. When I survey to the wondrous cross on which the meter it's 4-4 four, four. but I would not conduct this in 4 I would conduct it in 2 because it feels more like 2 to me and it floats along much nicer okay so watch me conduct it in 4 okay ready and 1 when I serve 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 you see that? it's a lot of movement so what if I do 2? what would it be? watch 1, 2, 1, 2 it's very different See, so that's a huge stick. difference. Stick with two. So two is good. Yeah. Does that mean I can you hold my so crackers in the other day? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so little things like that make a difference. Because when I'm doing this, I, I'm working too hard. <laughs> I'm simplifying it a little. And I don't want to distract from the message of the song. I want to match the mood of the music too. Okay. Any other questions? There's so much to cover here. I, it's like, where do you even start? Well, I have a lot yeah. because we need new hymn books. Yeah. So, you know, like Dan Delavan brought me some ideas because he's worked on it for his church. Where do we go with that nowadays? Because we do so many inserts of songs that aren't in a hymn book, but then that gets annoying to people. Yeah. And we're still not doing all PowerPoint. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a suggestion. I really like this hymn book. I like this hymn book a, a lot. Good mix. Yeah. Um, I picked this for our church. We had great hymns of the faith before. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a great hymnal. But the notes are very small. It's hard to read. Mm -hmm. This is a little more visible. Very clear. It's good binding. Um, but, you know, it's always a trade-off because there's songs that you want that aren't in there. And there's songs that you wish were in there and they're not. Mm -hmm. You know, So it's tough. Yeah. But this is good because it's a great balance of all of history. Yeah. What so many churches have done is they've rejected hundreds of years of music from the past, great texts, timeless truths, just for a modern feel, yeah. okay. you know? But they're not writing like this, you know? Mm -hmm. Some people are, and they're writing good texts, but not a lot. So I would rather use tunes and texts that are timeless that I know 100 years from now, they're still gonna be good, mm -hmm. you know? But I don't want to, I don't want my church to just go through the motions and not think about what they're singing. So I always compel people to reflect on what they're singing. Mm -hmm. So it might be just singing, you know, two verses to really think about what we're doing, you know. Then to just run through six six verses. You can do verse one, verse two, chorus. Verse mm -hmm. three, verse four, chorus. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's good, you know. Uh, just make sure you communicate with your pianist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and tell the church. Now, a lot of times you'll introduce to the church, okay, stanzas one, <laughs> three, and four. And they still go to stanza two. Mm -hmm. It's like they don't hear you. So you have to refresh your memory, you know? In between. Yeah. So saying the first phrase, stuff like that. While yeah. doing four and a third. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It is a talent. <laughs> now, conducting is uh, overwhelming at first. You know, what am I doing? I should not be doing this, you know, you might feel. But you just got to get used to feeling that beat. And then you can branch off. One, two, you know, get used to three, get used to four. And it, all music really comes down to two, three, and four. Two and three. Everything breaks down. 
Mm. You know? And the majority of your hymns are 2, 3, and 4. If you see 12, 8, don't worry, that's just 4. Okay? If you see 6, 8, that's just 2. You know, I've seen music where it's like 1 and a half, 16. You're not going to have that in your hymnal. Okay? <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> Just not gonna go there. Why <laughs> yeah, sixteen? has a very, very fast pace. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Anything I can help you? If one song in our church that we all never stay together on, it's not in here. It's great as the Lord. It's yeah. The, there's that long. You get to the, near the end of the song, and then there's some holes, and then there's and some people like to sing it quickly through there. I can't even remember the timing of it, but it seems to change. But I don't know if there's like a, a, get, a standard for that. If people are just comfortable with singing a certain way, do you get, eventually oh, it's follow the conversation. This is a good, this is a good point. Or, yeah. um, sometimes the music is one thing, and what people sing is totally different day by day. Um, in the original hymnal, it's a dotted rhythm, day by day, and with each bit, right? But what do people do? They make it smooth, day by day, right? And I like it smooth. I really do. It's more reflective to the text. The dotted rhythm doesn't really fit. Um, trust and obey. There's a long hold in there, mm -hmm. in the middle. Um, newer hymnals have updated to match that. But you'll find over time, your church might do something different than other churches do with rhythm, with timing. Um, you know, you want to teach them, try to teach them according to the music, but if they're all doing it that way, you probably just go with that. Instead of being like, well, I know music, I know I'm right, you're all wrong, we're going to do it this way, you know? Um, I would just probably go with what the majority are doing there, you know, but teach them too. Yeah. So hardest moments for the conductor, fermatas, holds, initial entrance. Usually it's going to work if it's on beat one, but if you have pickups, it's a little harder. Okay, so for any pickup, lead on, O King, one, two, three, lead. So you're giving three, and then everyone's in on four. So you give the beat before what the beat you would see here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's how you bring them in. Because if you just conduct four, they never got to breathe. You just you're throwing it at them. See, one, two, lead. See, so now I want to breathe with them too. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Practice your conducting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're doing one thing this afternoon too. We're going to sing a medley of hymns. Okay. Three hymns in a row. Um, I, I, we like to do that a lot. Try to tie it in. We're trying to match a theme. Um, also, just keeping, keeping the, the words fresh. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you'll sing, you know, you sing one, two, three, four. By the time you get to verse four, you're not thinking about it. But you sing a medley, one hymn into another, and now you go into that that line that you're like, whoa, I didn't even know that phrase was in there. Mm -hmm. Isn't that like with, with Scripture, right? You read the Bible, and you're just doing your devotions. You don't even think about phrases sometimes. And then you really reflect on it, and it's powerful. you know. So just putting things in new context, like a medley, one hymn into another, like not, you know, not singing all the verses, or maybe an alternate tune, all those things help. Yeah, but my big thing, yeah, sing with the understanding. Yeah, understand what you're saying. Yeah. 